Not really. Brittany, can you and Alden switch spots real quick? I'm sorry to move you, but there's just a lot of shadow on you. Okay, that's much better. Haley's the only one watching you guys so far. Thank you, Haley. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Question Time with the Barrier Island Naturalists. My name is Alden. And I'm Brittany. And we're going to be diving into some topics that we weren't able to touch on yesterday. To get us started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the palm tree and why it is on our state's flag. So South Carolina has the palm tree as its state tree, and the palm tree has a place of prominence on the state flag. This is because of the defense of Charleston Harbor in the Revolutionary War. The palm tree was what we built Fort Moultrie out of. Palms have a little bit of a different structure from hardwoods. A fun fact about palm trees that may surprise you is that they are not actually trees. They are more closely related to grasses than they are to trees. The inner core of a palm is live wood, while the outer husk is the dead wood. This is the opposite of hardwood trees, where the outer wood, the bark, is the live wood, while the inner core, the heartwood, is dead wood. This difference in structure made it possible for a fort made out of palm trees to essentially repel the cannonballs of the British Armada. Uh, when cannons were fired at the palms, rather than splintering and shattering the wood as it would for hardwood, the cannonballs essentially just got stuck in the spongy fibrous material of the palms. So the defenders were actually able to jump down off the walls of the fort, pick British cannonballs off of the fort, and fire them back at the British, which was an amazing act of heroism by the revolutionary defenders. They were able to repel the British from Charleston Harbor, and the palm tree now holds a place of prominence in our state's history. However, there was a lot of history that happened here in the Sea Islands. There was the first siege of Charleston, which gained the palm tree its place of prominence, but there was also the second siege of Charleston. The second siege of Charleston, fun fact, started right here on Seabrook Island. When the British landed an expeditionary force here on the island, they actually built a small encampment fort here on the island and then proceeded to march north across John's Island, which is the nearest and largest island in South Carolina, around to the northern edge of Charleston Peninsula, cutting the peninsula off from the mainland and laying siege to the city, firing cannons upon the city from land rather than from sea. The fortresses in Charleston Harbor were able to repel the British Armada, so the British attacked from land, cutting the city off, isolating the defenders, and capturing over 3,500 revolutionary soldiers, as well as a huge amount of supplies that were vitally necessary for the war in the North. This was the biggest defeat that the Revolutionary Army suffered in the entire Revolutionary War. So a lot of history has happened in this area. It's pretty amazing. And nature is always connected to history. Now the palm tree is an incredible, incredible tree. And Brittany has some stuff to talk about as well. So here at Barrier Island, we are lucky enough to have different species um, of our palm trees. So you can actually see one outside. Up here we have a sable major. It's this really tall tree and it's right above our house. And then if you look really uh, close down on the ground, you see some sable miners. And you might also, if you're super lucky, you might see some sago 
um, palmetto trees that we have around too. Now our sago palmetto trees, they are not native to this area, but they are a type of palmetto tree that we do have here on our um, barrier island. So for our sable majors, they tend to grow really, really tall, just like the one that you see right here. However, for our sable major, since Alden said that they are closely related to grasses, they tend to lay low, just like grasses was, uh, just like grasses do on the ground. So those are two different types that we have here. Wow, thank you for the information, Brittany. Uh, so yesterday, Miss Alex mentioned in our video um, that we have different levels out in the forest um, for growth, and that those depend on essentially the length of the leaf. I um, mean, she talked about that um, that has to do with photosynthesis. And so things that have longer leaves are going to be on the ground because they need those long leaves to catch more sunlight in a shaded area. Um, what exactly is photosynthesis? Would you all elaborate on that, please, and the importance of it uh, to the environment and even to ourselves? Sure thing. So photosynthesis is a biological process by which plants convert sunlight into energy and food. So it's a process in which sunlight is captured in cells of the plants. The energy from the sun is then converted along with CO2 in order to make uh, CO2 and water in order to make glucose um, and oxygen. So the plant makes basic sugars and is able to feed itself, energize its cells, and ultimately other animals will come along and eat the plants. This is how plants form the basis of our ecosystem. They are producers. Just using the sunlight, they can make more food. They also then produce oxygen as a stage of this process, eating up carbon dioxide and making oxygen that we all can breathe. In fact, that we all need to breathe. We breathe oxygen, as do all other animals on this planet. Plants produce the oxygen. Without plants around, no oxygen. Or not no oxygen, but much, much lower levels of oxygen, to the point where life would not be supported. So, plants are vitally necessary. Photosynthesis is the process that allows us to live and breathe on this planet. And on top of that, it does eat up carbon dioxide, allowing the plants to grow strong, to produce food, and to allow us to breathe. You can also notice here in our forest, our Marytown forest, that this can cause a lot of competition with a lot of different plants. Uh, for example, like our trees, you might see some trees, you might notice this around your neighborhood or somewhere that you visit, maybe for vacation, but you might notice that some trees look like that their roots are very close. It's because, of course, those trees, they want to make it to the sun. And so sometimes they're really close because they're trying to go through the canopy. The canopy is the top of the forest so that they can get uh, more sunlight than the tree next to them. So it's kind of like a little competition to see who can make it towards the sun um, quicker. And then also, uh, there's something called epiphytes and epiphylls. And these are going to be our plants. They don't make roots down on the ground. They typically grow on different plants, like we have that here in our forest. And a lot of these epiphytes and these epiphylls, they too, they want to get to the sun. So instead of making roots like a tree and taking years to grow up to the canopy, they'll just make roots on a tree that's already high up, and then they can get access to that sun a little bit sooner. And so it's kind of like they're competing too. What would be a common example of one of those? Well, we have our Spanish moss that we know live on our live oaks, and you can see that all throughout South Carolina. All right, thank you. Um, and lastly, we had a question last week, and I'm sorry that we've neglected it, neglected to answer until this point. Um, but we had a question about migratory birds and what kind of migratory birds we might see here on our island because it is going to be that time of year. Well, that is a very broad question. We see hundreds of different species of migratory birds that come through this area. Depending on the time of year, there are dozens and dozens of new species on the island either just stopping over and resting before they go further north or south or hanging out here for a few months either during the winter that's when we do get a lot of migratory species or during the summer and so there's constant cycling of different bird species right now painted buntings are starting to show up again they are one of my favorite species of birds they are one of the most brilliantly colored birds in the entire United States. If you get a chance, look up a painted bunting online. They are beautiful. 
some of the most beautiful birds you'll ever see on this leaf. And I haven't seen one yet, but they are starting to sing in this area. So they are back on the island. They'll be here for the summer months, and then they will migrate back. I think they live most of the time in Central and South America, but I could be wrong. So don't quote me on that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, friends, for tuning in today. Thank you very much. And have it. a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and try your best to enjoy the weather. Bye. Bye, everybody.